Hi, it's Mrs. Ferris from Wood Library and welcome to this month's Spotlight On program. This month we're shining the spotlight on Pat Hutchins, the author and illustrator of over 50 books for children. This is Pat. She was born in England and she was the sixth of seven children, so she had lots of brothers and sisters. And I bet she had a lot of fun with them because she has a lot of fun in her books. We had a bag that you could pick up today so you'd have the materials for today's program, but you don't need them to enjoy the stories. I'll go over those uh, before we get started, just so if you wanted to get some things to make the craft projects, you'd be able to. One of the things that you find in your bag is something that was really too big for the bag, a flower. And you'll find out more about that when we get started. We'll also have a bag that has two eyeballs in it, a piece of scrap paper, and a small tan plate. You'll have another bag that has some paper cookies and a magnet. And you'll also have a sheet of paper that's a map and some characters that you can color and cut out and make into finger puppets to play on the map. And then of course we had to have a snack, so there's some real cookies in your bag too. But as I said, you don't have to have a bag to enjoy the stories, and we're gonna get started with our first story right now. It's called The Wind Blue. And I picked this one especially because March is supposed to be such a windy month, and this is probably one of my favorite stories about the wind. And it's written and illustrated by Pat Hutchins. This is a brand new copy for us here at the library because our old one got worn out. Can you see how windy it is? Can you blow like the wind? Let's get started at the very beginning. The wind blew. It took the umbrella from Mr. White and quickly turned it inside out. It snatched the balloon from little Priscilla and swept it up to join the umbrella. And this is a fun story because you can see maybe what's coming next. And not content, it took a hat and still not satisfied with that. It whipped a kite into the air and kept it spinning around up there. It grabbed a shirt left out to dry and tossed it upward to the sky. It plucked a hanky from a nose and up and up and up it rose. It lifted the wig from the judge's head and didn't drop it back. Instead, it whirled the postman's letters up as if it hadn't had enough. It blew so hard it quickly stole a striped flag fluttering on a pole. It pulled the new scars from the twins and tossed them to the other things. It sent the newspapers fluttering round and then Tired of the things it found. Mixed them up. Threw them down. And blew away to sea. As you might have noticed at the beginning of the book, I kind of pointed it out. But this is a fun story to look at closely. The illustrations are fun. And on each page, you'll be able to see who's coming next and what might get tossed up into the sky. And I had thought about us making pinwheels, but I have another craft in mind, so that's what this flower is. This is tulip, good sign of spring, and we're hoping spring is coming soon, but this is also a pinwheel. And I thought maybe you could stick this outside your house 
and the wind can blow it around, won't blow it away, hopefully, and now you'll have something pretty to look at until the real tulips and other spring flowers join us. So our next story is the one you're going to need this for. And while I'm reading the story, we'll act some of it out, but this also might be a good time to, well, no, let's wait just a little bit. So what you can do before we even start our story is take out your cookies and you should have 12 of them. And then mom and dad, if you would, you can cut this little piece of magnet into 12 pieces so you can put a piece of magnet on the back of each one of these cookies. And then they will be able to use them on the refrigerator or maybe a dishwasher or something metallic. Um, you don't have to put those on for right now because you can just lay these out on a table. But let's get our story that's called The Doorbell Rang. And when I look at this picture, I wonder if it reminded Pat Hutchins of her brothers and sisters and all their friends who might have been over at their house when she was little. And now we start off. This is published by Green Willow Books. And Mom has just taken a fresh batch of cookies out of the oven. Can you smell them? I've made some cookies for tea, said Ma. Oh, good, said Victoria and Sam. We're starving. Share them between yourselves, said Ma. I made plenty. That's six each, said Sam and Victoria. And before we continue reading, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my cookies right here. And let's see how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Just like Sam and Victoria had. But they said that they could have six each. So there's one for Sam and one for Victoria. 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 One for Sam. One for Victoria, one for Sam, and one for Victoria. So now each of them have one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I could be happy with six cookies. Do you? If you don't have a board to put yours up on and you can use some tape to stick them up, you can just lay them on the uh, floor in front of you or on the table in front of you and take your pile of 12 cookies and divide them into two groups that each have six in them. You can line them up like we did over here, or you could just kind of scatter them around. Let's keep reading. They look as good as Grandma's, said Victoria. They smell as good as Grandma's, said Sam. No one makes cookies like Grandma, said Ma, as ding dong, the doorbell rang. It was Tom and Hannah from next door. Come in, said Ma. You can share the cookies. That's three each, said Sam and Victoria. So let's divide our cookies again. So we have, a, instead of just two piles, we're going to have four piles. So one for Sam, he'll have four. Victoria can have four. Is that right? Hmm. Not four each, how many? Three. So I was not gonna have enough. So we're gonna put them into piles. So there are now three bunches of cookies. One for Sam, one for Victoria, one for Tom, and one for Hannah. Three cookies is a nice amount of cookies. That's three each, said Sam and Victoria. They smell as good as your grandma, said Tom. And look as good, said Hannah. <laughs> no one makes cookies like grandma, said Ma, as ding dong, 
the doorbell rang. It was Peter and his little brother. Come in, said Mom. You can share the cookies. So how many children do we have now? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And we've got 12 cookies. So let's see if they can figure out. That's two each, said Sam and Victoria. So let's rearrange our cookies again. So we, now we're going to have six piles with two in each. So I'll take one from that one and one from that one. So we've got two and two and two. We've got two and two and two. So now each child can have two cookies and they look so good. I think I'd be happy with two cookies. How about you? They look as good as your grandma's and smell as good, said Peter. Nobody makes cookies like grandma, said Ma, as ding dong, the doorbell rang. It was Joy and Simon with their four cousins. Come in, said Ma, you can share the cookies. That's one each, said Sam and Victoria. So we better divide them again. If we've got 12 children, each one is going to get one cookie. So one there, one there, one there, and one there. One there, one there. So now each child can have one cookie. But they look so good and I bet they smell so good. They'll be happy with one cookie each. They smell as good as your grandma's, said Joy. And look as good, said Simon. No one makes cookies like grandma, said Ma, as ding dong, the doorbell rang. And rang ding dong. Oh dear, said Ma, as the children stared at the cookies on their plates. Perhaps you better eat them before we open the door. We'll wait, said Sam. I wonder who's there this time. It was Grandma with an enormous tray of cookies. How nice to have so many friends to share them with, said Grandma. It's a good thing I made a lot. And no one makes cookies like Grandma, said Ma, as ding dong, the doorbell rang. So you can play with your cookies and divide them up, count them, see how many different ways you can arrange them. Whether you have one for each child or two for each child or three for each child, or four, or maybe you'll just put them all in together on a big tray and share them with everybody who happens to stop by and just happens to like some yummy chocolate chip cookies. Well, why don't you take a little bit of a break and then we'll come on back. You might want to have your own cookies right now. And then we'll get ready for a story about Rosie the Hen. Are you ready to go for a walk with Rosie? This is called Rosie's Walk and it's a story about a chicken who sets out for a walk. But, oh, this is one of those wraparound covers. Let me open it up so you can see what's gonna be happening. Someone is gonna be following her. There she is in her chicken coop. 
And look at that farm, all kinds of things around it. Rosie the hen went for a walk. She walked across the yard. Do you see what's down there? Do you see that? Do you know what that's called? That's a rake. <gasps> Did Rosie notice? She just kept on walking. She walked around the pond. Oh, <gasps> look out, Rosie. Here comes that fox. Did he get her? No, splash, he fell into the pond. And Rosie, well, she kept on walking. She walked over the haystack. Oh no, Rosie, he's right behind you. Did he get her? No, he was so heavy, he fell into the haystack. And Rosie? She kept on walking. She walked past the mill. Now, I don't know if you can see that. There's a bag of flour, like you might use to make a cake or bread or cookies, and there's a string coming down, and it's tied around a little loop here, but a piece of the string gets wrapped around Rosie's ankle. Can you guess what's going to happen? Whoops! That fox got covered with flour. Did Rosie get caught? Nope. She kept on walking. She walked through the fence. <gasps> Look out, Rosie. Here comes that fox. Did he get her? No, he landed in a wagon. And Rosie just kept on walking. She walked under the beehives. I don't think I need to say, look out, Rosie, this time. I need to say, look out, Mr. Fox. There he goes. And Rosie the hen. She got back in time for dinner. And I don't think that fox bothered her again. So this time, I want you to get that map that we talked about before. And you can see in it all the places that Rosie went. There's her chicken coop. Let's see. If, yeah, there's her chicken coop. And there's the rake. And that's where the flower was. The flower bag was hanging. There's the pond, the haystack. Actually, that's not where the flower was. The flower was down here by the windmill, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And there's the fence and the wagon and the beehives. So what I'm inviting you to do is sometime, not right now maybe, but later on, you can color in your hen and make it look like Rosie. You can color your fox. So you may want to have some markers at home. And some scissors to cut them out, or maybe mom or dad can help you cut them out. And when you cut them out, do you see there's some extra white space at the edge? What I did with mine was I cut off a thin strip, actually two of them, just like that. And then I kind of curled it a little bit and I made a loop, taped it together, so I made a loop like that that can fit on a finger. And then I taped it right on the back of my Rosie the Hen and my fox, so I can use them as finger puppets. And then I can take them and 
Rosie the hen can go for a walk. He can walk. She can walk by the rink. She can walk by the pond. She can walk by the haystack. She can walk by the mill. She can walk through the fence. She can walk by the beehive. And then she can get home in time for dinner. And you can have that fox follow her everywhere she goes. Maybe you can be Rosie the hen and mom or dad or your brother or sister can be that fox. And then you can switch off. So this is a an over under, around, and through map game. Are you ready for another story? This is called Goodnight Owl. And it's all about an owl who's trying to sleep during the day and all his neighbors are making way too much noise. Did you know that owls like to sleep during the day and then be awake at night? They're called nocturnal. I wonder if some of you are nocturnal, that you like to be up all night. Owl tried to sleep. But the bees buzz, buzz, and owl tried to sleep. The squirrel cracked nuts, crunch, 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 and owl tried to sleep. The crows croaked, caw, caw, and owl tried to sleep. The woodpecker pecked, rat-a-tat, rat-a-tat, and owl tried to sleep. The starlings chittered, tweet, 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 and owl tried to sleep. The jays screamed, ah, ah, and owl tried to sleep. The cuckoo called, cuckoo. An owl tried to sleep. The robin peeped. Beep, 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 beep. An owl tried to sleep. The sparrows chirped. Cheep, cheep. An owl tried to sleep. The doves cooed. Coo, coo. An owl tried to sleep. Well, the bees buzz, 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 and the squirrel cracked nuts, crunch, crunch. The crows croaked, caw, caw. The woodpecker pecked, rat-a-tat, rat-a-tat. The starlings chittered, tweet, 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 tweet. The jays screamed, ah, ah. The cuckoo called, cuckoo, cuckoo. The robin peeped, beep, beep. The sparrows chirped, cheep, cheep. And the doves cooed, coo, coo. And owl could not sleep. But then the darkness fell, the moon came up, and there wasn't a sound. And then owl screech, 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 and woke everyone up. There was a lot of birds in that tree, weren't there? Well, we're going to make an owl right now. So what I need to have you do is get that bag. Let's see which one it is. It has the paper plate, the eyeballs, and a piece of orange cardstock. And we're gonna quickly make a little craft here. So take those things all out. And the first thing you're gonna do is take your paper plate and you're gonna fold the sides in. So I'm gonna fold it. I'm trying to think which way I liked doing it. I think I actually turned it over and folded it in that way. So I folded one side in like that and the other to have it go into. Now you don't want those to meet you want them to be kind of even because those are going to be your owl's wings. So just like that. You might want to fold it down well like that. And then you're going to take the top and fold it down to make his face. Just 
just like that and pinch it all the way across. Now, what I'm going to do with mine is I'm going to open it up again and I'm going to take a marker and draw some feathers on there. And I'll show you my finished one to show you what I mean. I'm just going to draw a squiggly line across those wings. So. You can do even a straight line. But I like to do it a little squiggly like his, the ends of his feathers. lost the top, so I hope I'll be able to find that soon. But that's how it's gonna look. And fold that down. And what I'm going to do for mine is to make it stay down. If you have a stapler around, I'm gonna recommend just stapling that. Do you see how I just stapled it right along the edge? You could do glue, but this is pretty thick paper and it might, well, it's a paper plate and it might not hold it very well, but that way we'll hold it down. Then I'm going to take, do you have a glue stick? I'm just going to take a glue stick and put some of my glue right on the back of it. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to leave it just like that. I'm going to take that piece of orange paper because I want to make his beak. So I'm going to cut a triangle. Do you know what a triangle is? It's a shape that has three sides, kind of like a wedge of pizza. So I'm just gonna cut a triangle in that orange paper. So it looks just like that. And I'm gonna glue that right in the center of my owl, at the bottom of his face. So let me just put a little glue on that. Stick that right there, because I want the beak to be under his eyeballs. So careful. Then I can take the eyeball that I put the glue on, stick it right on his face. Put some glue on the other eyeball. Put it right over here. And then the only thing he needs is are some feet. So, let's see. I just drew some rough little feet like that and used the rest of the paper. And this is the trick I always tell you. If you draw what you want, uh, fold it in half and draw it on there, you can cut it out and you can cut two at once and they'll look just the same. And I'm gonna be very brave, but I'm not going to draw anything because I didn't bring a pencil over here. So I'm just going to draw some feet for him. So three toed feet. So just kind of free cut those. So there are his two feet. And you can either glue them on or you could tape them on the paper plate. glue on there. And there's my owl. Screech! Screech! All right, I'm going to clean up here and then we'll finish up with one last story, which I have to say was one of my son's favorite stories when he was growing up. So I'll be right back. So we have one more story, and as I was saying, this is one that was a favorite of ours when my son was little. We read this lots and lots of times. It's a counting book. It's also a kind of a look and find book. And I found myself often adding a little bit to the text to make it, well, just be a little bit more fun. But it's a very simple story about one hunter. 
one hunter. He was looking for some wild animals, but he didn't see any. Do you? He didn't see two elephants. He just kept on walking. He didn't see three giraffes. He just kept walking. He didn't see four ostriches. He just kept on walking. He didn't see five antelopes. Should we count them? One, two, three, four, five. Nope, he didn't see them. He just kept walking. He didn't see six tigers. He just kept on walking. He didn't see, can you guess what those are? Seven crocodiles. He just kept on walking. He didn't see eight monkeys. He just kept on walking. He didn't see nine snakes. He just kept on walking. He didn't see 10 parrots, but he heard them as they flew off out of the tree. And he turned around and what did he see? 10 parrots, nine snakes, eight monkeys, seven crocodiles, six tigers, five antelope, four ostriches, three giraffes, and two elephants, and that one hunter ran all the way home. Well, those are our stories by Pat Hutchins. I hope you enjoyed them. There are more here at the library, so you may want to come and check them out. Or maybe you want to check these out so that you can read them at home by yourself. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll be back next month with another Spotlight program just for you. Bye-bye.